can you give me the definition of a paper town? Because I know in the book yeah. it has different meanings, but for maybe people who don't know about the book. Sure, a paper town is a phenomenon in cartography where uh, map makers will put a fake town on their maps in order to protect their copyright. So if they see that fake town on someone else's map, they'll know that that uh, that they're copying. It was stolen. Yeah, exactly. I think you summarize it in one line in the movie very effectively. Thank you. I should have just let you deliver that. <laughs> um, but uh, there's a famous example of a paper town uh, called Agla, New York, that was created by these two map makers in the 1930s. And then in the 1970s, it actually became real because people kept going to that intersection expecting there to be a place called Agla, New York. Someone actually built a place called Agla, New York, and that's very important uh, in the movie. So now with the... Uh Paper Towns in terms of the plot, because I watched a video when you first came out with the book where you were trying to kind of summarize or give a log line and you were having a tough time doing it. Yeah. What, did you have to do that at all in order to sell it to the studio or did Faulkner Stars kind of take care of that process? Faulkner Stars, Faulkner Stars sold the movie, um, Paper Towns. But it, it is still, by the way, a movie that there's, it's difficult to have a log line for, right? Like it it's, is. It, it's complex. Yeah, it's not a genre movie. It's mm -hmm. not like a comedy or a drama or a romance. Yeah. Like it's a movie about coming of age and And you get a little bit of all of that. Yeah. It? Yeah. You get I mean it's a very funny movie that's also got a big heart that also has great love scenes in it and um, I think it's difficult to sell a movie like that these days, but uh, we had the benefit of um, the success of the Fault in Our Stars to kind of help us make it, I think. And what about for people who look at this and they're like, oh, it's going to be Fault in Our Stars 2? <laughs> <laughs> they will be disappointed. Um, it is not Fault in Our Stars 2, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, I would no. watch that movie, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone was interested in trying to make Fault in Our Stars again. We wanted to make um, a very different kind of movie about, um, about adolescence and growing up. How about the uh, fan reaction to Fault in Our Stars compared to what you've got going on here? Is there any element of this book to film adaptation that changed things that people kind of freaked out about? Like like Isaac's hair, maybe. Uh, oh yeah, there's <laughs> lots of things. I think the biggest thing is that SeaWorld is not in the movie and it's a big part of the book, but um, we didn't want didn't to have SeaWorld in the movie, didn't want to promote SeaWorld or pay them, um, and that was just a choice that, uh, that the screenwriters and producers made. Was that kind of an obvious choice from the second you guys decided to make this movie, or was there any discussion to make it work in there any respect? Never, there, there was never any discussion about it, no. Not even just changing the park name? No. I thought that could be an easy out. No, uh, I don't even think that was ever mentioned. It could have, I, maybe we could have done that. We could have imagined some sort of marine park that, uh, you know, treats animals really well. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be a complete turnaround. Yeah, then we would have had to like make a whole movie about that. Um, everything that happens in that scene in the book um, now happens uh, just in a different place. It happens at the top of the SunTrust Tower, and I think it's uh, just as powerful uh, as, it, as it would have been if it had happened in the vicinity of a walrus. Can you tell me a little bit about getting involved in this yourself? I like that story you guys talked about last night where Kara did her audition but then she got to kind of improv a little and show her connection to the character. Did you have the opportunity to do anything like that? I did. I had originally auditioned for Margot and the casting directors and and the director just saw me more as a Lacey and I just hadn't even thought about it and then the minute that became a part of my reality. It, it, it just felt right. It just felt like I couldn't have been any other way. And I got to go in the room and meet Jake and, um, and, and talk about her. And in a lot of ways, we're a lot alike. So it was easy for me to jump into it and put my heart in it and um, hopefully do her justice. You did. Don't worry about that. What's it like for you when you're writing these characters? I mean, maybe this kind of speaks to the fact that I have no imagination, but when I write characters, I picture people that I know almost, so I can have a very specific image of them. Do you do that? I don't. I mean, I, I know a lot of writers who do that, but I don't have... I'm not... I don't really imagine faces um, or, or even, like, bodies in the way that, like, I, 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 I can look at someone and see, like, a body. Like, I imagine... Uh, because, I don't know, people are... It's made out of language, right? Like they're made out of words, and so um, I guess I, I don't know. I really struggle to talk about how I think when I'm writing because um, I, uh, it's, it's like very difficult for me to verbalize for some reason. But I don't. I never picture faces, um, and so um, once the movie uh, starts to be made, like those people become the way that I imagine 
the faces, but until then I don't have a face. So is it kind of like crazy to see someone like take on the character Yeah, it's then? weird. And then for a, for a while, you know, I, I'm always like, oh, I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if this works. I don't know if this is going to work for me, especially with um, like when I see auditions. Because I just don't, it's a weird thing. Like you're in a room. Someone it's is, not acting. It's, yeah. it's a room just like this. It's like a conference room. There's so weird. no props. There's no other actor. You're reading with a casting director. The casting director is always like, but I'm and I'm. Yeah, they're and like, I'm in love with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then you're like, you are? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was good. Thanks, man. No, I'm a really good actor. You should rethink your career. You yeah, know, I've been cut out of so many movies. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think like that's when I struggle to imagine it. But then, like, once, uh, in the case of Paper Towns, like, once we were on set uh, immediately, or even before we were on set, really, like, by the table read, everybody, everybody had just sort of like, fallen so deeply into their characters that it just felt very real to me. Is there anyone in particular that surprised you that got cast and you're like, oh, I don't know, but then on set you're like, damn, they nailed it. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess like the, the casting that we struggled with the most was for Ben, um, Q's best friend, and the guy who plays Ben, Austin Abrams, I, I really liked his audition, but I also didn't, I mean, I don't know, I, Ben's just a difficult character, and then he, he kills it. I mean, Honestly, like, I, Austin portrayed Ben in a way that I didn't read in the book. I, I pictured Ben differently. I heard him differently. And yeah, I, I did too. But then the Ben, it, the Ben yeah. that he found is actually is better than the Ben. I fell in love with the Ben that he found. Yeah, me too. I mean, like you really did, but that yeah. guy, I, did, I did a little bit too. We're actually getting. <laughs> but only to Ben, not to well, Austin. Oh, right, right. Yeah, he's got to play Ben his whole life. <laughs> Do you guys talk about character backstory much when you're prepping for this? Like, maybe ideas you came up with while writing it that never even made it into the book? Um, I talked a little bit about some of that stuff with Nat and Kara, um, some stuff that got cut from the book. But, uh, but you know, the truth is, like, they all, all of these young men and women are extremely good and extremely professional and needed. Has to say that. No, I don't need to say that. I could have said that you guys rely deeply on me because <laughs> I, am, I am the greatest. But um, the truth is that like there's, they were all so good that I, I can pretend that I had some role in it, but I didn't. <laughs> So now what's the deal with looking for Alaska? Because you had Fault in Our Stars come out last year, and yeah. now this one come, comes out like extremely soon thereafter. Yeah. So could we expect the same thing from that one as well? Uh, I don't know. Um, different studio, different setup, um, but uh, same producers, same screenwriters, uh, just got hired. So um, it certainly has a chance that um, I feel like it hasn't had in a long time. And uh, I am cautiously optimistic, but I, I can't predict the future. I have no way of, I mean, these things can fall apart so easily. There's so many different ways for something not to happen that I don't want to get my hopes up too soon.